Welcome everybody, um, thanks for joining me. So today we're going to be speaking about rent during the lockdown period. <clears throat> All right, so if any of you do not know who we are, we are out of our attorneys. Um, I'm Clinton Van Niekirk. my email address is there and our contact number is also there. Um, we do our best to answer all questions that come through email as well after the sessions in the event that there's not enough time. Right, so in, before we get to the nitty gritty of uh, rentals during the lockdown period, we should go through um, the generals um, about landlord and tenant relationships. So obviously um, it's it's arguably the most common legal relationship that we have. Everybody rents premises to live in. Um, and obviously there's many, many businesses that rent their premises to work from. Um, there's There are many different kinds of lease of property. And what we're gonna talk about is the impacts of the lockdown on this rental contract. We'll be dealing with two main forms of um, of the lease residential and commercial leases. Obviously, as, as you'll no doubt be aware, residential lease is one for a private dwelling, dwelling which includes rental of a room or an entire property. Um, so a commercial lease is one for commercial property, obviously, which means that commercial operations will be undertaken on the property. Um, there's differences between the two forms of lease and um, that, it, that even extends to the lockdown and the implications of the lockdown on that lease. Right, so residential leases. Obviously, this is for residential properties. They're used only for private dwellings. There's no commercial activity that gets undertaken on the property. Um, you can operate certain professional services uh, from the premises, provided you have consent of your landlord and um, the property is allowed to be used for that function. Um, and the, the purpose behind it is obviously that you pay your landlord a certain sum at a specified time, could be weekly, could be monthly, um, and they provide you with housing. The rental is determined by your floor space, your area, and the desirability of the property. Then we have commercial leases. So this is the, the rental of commercial space. It can be for offices, factories, or any other commercial undertaking. The properties are not used for accommodation, so people don't live there. Um, they're purely of a commercial nature. The purpose of these properties is obviously, as opposed to the, the residential properties, you pay rental at a specified time so that you can undertake business from the premises. Rental is generally determined by the floor space, which is a measure of the potential utility of the property. Right, so the basics out of the way. Um, majority of you would have already known all of that. Now we get to the question of rent during the lockdown period. So obviously this lockdown has affected everybody's lives. Um, and now big questions start arising specifically around expenses during the lockdown and obviously the biggest expense in uh, the large majority of people the world over is their rent um, I, I believe this the stat is quite high on on average how much rent takes of a person's um, monthly gross income right so is rent payable during the lockdown so there's several considerations that affect the question whether rent is payable during lockdown Rental premises are generally governed by the terms of the contract, right? So obviously the terms of the contract are what govern the relationship between the parties. Um, if there are any terms that are not specifically included in um, the contract that uh, don't necessarily deal with some issues, we have what is the common law which will govern the matter. So if something is missing from the contract, the common law takes over and the contract doesn't um, necessarily become unenforceable. Um, the contract will be governed by co common law on those in that event. Um, so in terms of the, the payment of rental during an event like a lockdown, there are differences between residential and commercial rentals, just as there are differences um, between the two at a normal time. Um, when the lockdown kicks in, then there are differences between these two properties as well. The rule is the same for the both, for, for both of them, but the effects are different. So the basic rule is that if the property can be used for the intended purpose, rent is due. Right. So let's look at residential properties and rent during the lockdown. Okay, so it's obviously the lockdown has confined people to their homes, which means that individuals have to remain home as far as possible. There has been a, a relaxing of the restrictions um, since the 1st of May. Uh, that have allowed some people to 
um, go back to work and perform their functions insofar as they are necessary. Uh, but most co commercial activity even currently has been suspended. So what that means is that people will not be going to work every day. People are still entitled to use their homes, however, obviously because you're confined to your home, you're still entitled to use your home. So the lockdown doesn't have any impact on the use and enjoyment of one's own home. So what that means is that the rent that would normally be due for your residential property is still going to be due during the lockdown, okay? So if you if you think about it logically, you, you might be confined to your home um, during the lockdown, but that doesn't mean that you don't pay rent because obviously you're still using your home. Okay, we'll get to the practicalities of that later. Um, so th this conversation doesn't end there, but we will get back to it. All right, so let's move on to commercial properties and rent during the lockdown. Okay, obviously, as we said before, we've all been confined to our homes, um, bar a few necessary and permitted um, jobs that people are allowed to go back to. So the majority of our commercial activity has been suspended. Most businesses will not be functioning from their business premises. So the large majority um, are not considered essential and will be operating from home if possible or will just suspend their operations for the duration of a lockdown. So this does therefore have an impact on the ability of people to go to work and to operate their businesses which means that there's been an impact on the use and enjoyment of the property for the tenants, right? So you can see that there's a difference between the two, whereas we are lock in lockdown and we can still use our homes because we're confined to our homes. We cannot use our commercial premises for the most part because we are confined to our homes. We're not allowed to operate our businesses. So where it's become impossible for the tenant to make use of the property concerned, no rent is due to the landlord. So we look at it logically again. If I cannot use my property for the purpose for which it is intended in the rental agreement, for instance, I am selling non-essential products from my store that I rent every month. If it has become impossible for me to legally use the property for the intended purpose, I can no longer sell this, the items that I'm selling because they're not essential. Obviously, I'm not getting what I'm paying for under the under the lease, so the rent is not due. As I said, the tenant cannot legally make use of the premises for the intended purposes, and so they would not be required to pay rent to the landlord. This provision is generally contained in a force majeure clause in a contract, which simply makes provision for acts of God, which no person can control and which impact the performance of either or both parties. Again, I just remind everybody that these, um, these relationships are governed by agreements, so obviously your agreement will take precedence over um, the common law. So you have to also read your agreement. Um, but again, it's a, a, as we said in, in a previous uh, session that we held when we were dealing with paying of employees during the lockdown, um, reasonable, reasonableness must prevail. So people need to be reasonable with one another. And uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. So obviously now we've, we've dealt with whether or not you need to pay rent for your residential properties. You obviously still get to use and enjoy your property, so you're still going to have to pay rent. Um, and then with regards to your commercial properties, those businesses that are not able to run and use the property for the intended purpose will not need to pay rent, while those that can still use their premises will need to pay rent. Then we obviously get to the necessary question, and that is what happens during the lockdown if I don't pay my rent? Um, will I be evicted and um, what is the scenario then? Okay, so obviously it's one that's extremely important to residential property tenants. Um, as I said, the majority of commercial businesses will not be running because they're not um, permitted to, to run at this stage. So more people are going to be worried about their residential properties because obviously they don't want to be evicted from their homes, um, especially considering the circumstances now. So obviously people need to know whether they can be evicted um, during the lockdown period. There are many factors which must be considered when answering the question. But thankfully, the government, in order to clarify the situation, uh, dealt with this matter in the most recent set of lockdown regulations, which we'll go through now. Okay, so regulation 19 is the one that we need to deal with specifically. It deals with evictions uh, during lockdown and it says as follows, prohibition on evictions. A competent court may grant an order for the eviction of any person from 
land or a home in terms of the extension of Security of Tenure Act and the Prevention of Illegal Eviction and Unlawful Occupation of Land Act, provided that any order of eviction shall be stayed and suspended until the last day of Alert Level 4, unless a court decides that it is not just and equitable to stay and suspend the order until the last day of the Alert Level 4 period. Okay. So what does this mean? Obviously, we're not all um, well versed in reading legislation, um, and that's what we are here for. Okay, so essentially, an order for eviction can be obtained during the lockdown period. So that means that if you're if you're in breach of the agreement, your um, landlord can get an order for an eviction against you, but the order for the eviction cannot be enforced until the end of the level four lockdown period. So what that means in basic terms is that if you are in breach of the agreement, the landlord can go to court and ask for an eviction order and can even go so far as getting the order, but the order will be stayed and suspended by the court pending the end of the level four lockdown period. In other words, the court will say something along the lines of the person is ordered to um, vacate the premises and then there'll be a provision at the end that says this is stayed until the end of the lockdown, level four lockdown period. So that means that the person cannot force uh, the tenant, the landlord cannot force the tenant out of the property on the basis of the order until the lockdown period has ended, or at least level four has ended, if level three doesn't extend this provision. Obviously, this is always on the basis that when level four ends, the government will issue level three regulations um, if we are lucky enough to move to level three, the government will issue the level three regulations. And if the level three regulations still prohibit the enforcement of the eviction orders, then obviously that will be extended. Um, but that is obviously dependent on what the level three restrictions say. For the current purposes, they can get the order, they cannot enforce the order until after level four. Okay, as I said, it will not operate until the end of level four period. But you've also got to bear in mind that that's not the end. I'm going to go back to the regulations. It says that provided that any order of eviction shall be stayed and suspended until the last day of alert level four, unless a court decides that it is not just and equitable to, to stay and suspend the order until the last day of the alert level four period. What that means then is that as a general rule, the landlord can get an eviction order against the tenant but the landlord cannot enforce the order against the tenant until the end of the level four period with the proviso that the court could decide to not stay or suspend the eviction order if it feels that the presiding officer feels that it's not just and equitable to stay and suspend the order now obviously they've used very vague terms um, so they've left it within the discretion of the court to decide what would be just and equitable and what would not be just and equitable. But as it stands there, the basic um, general practice is that they can grant the order, but they will not enforce the order. All right, what is just and equitable will be decided, I'm sure, uh, many times over during the lockdown period. Okay. Um, but you must also always bear in mind that the landlord must have a reason to evict the tenant. So it's not just, oh, it's lockdown, everybody's going to be evicted now the tenant would need to be in breach of the lease agreement. So if rent has been paid and there's no breach, obviously there's no eviction, okay? So the basic rules of eviction stand, you cannot just be evicted, you need to be in breach of the agreement before any eviction proceedings are instituted um, and the contract still needs to be followed to the note. So you cannot just be evicted with no reason. Okay, that doesn't change. Okay, so the practical implications of all of this, what does, this, what does everything mean? Okay, we've got all the law, we've got um, all, the, all the fancy stuff. What, what does this all mean? Okay, basically put, rent is still payable if the property can be used for the intended purpose. So in terms of the general rule, there's no difference between residential and commercial property. The rule is the same, that the property, if it can be used for its intended purpose, rent must still be paid on that property. Okay, it stays the same. It's the same rule for residential and commercial. It's just that in general, the residential can still be used while the commercial cannot, for the most part, be used. If the tenant cannot make payment, an order for eviction can be obtained, but the order will not be enforced during alert level four in general terms. Obviously, just remember 
that that proviso that the court could allow it to operate during alert level four if it finds that it is just and equitable to do so. Okay, so what should be done when a tenant cannot afford rent? It's all well and good to say that the rent is still due, but at the end of the day, a lot of people still can't afford the rent. So what can be done? Okay, so as with any legal matter, the parties can still negotiate. It's open to the parties to negotiate, okay? Um, when we were discussing um, the payment of employees, we again dealt with that issue um, of negotiation and reasonableness. It's a time where parties need to be reasonable with, in, with one another. Everybody needs to understand that this is a very difficult time. It's unprecedented. People are not earning money. Some people are losing their jobs. Um, some people won't even have an income after the lockdown. We don't know. Um, how far reaching these consequences will be individually and for the economy as a whole. Obviously, bearing in mind the situation, it's reasonable that people may struggle to make rent during and after the lockdown. In such a case, the tenant and landlord will need to come to some form of arrangement. Um, perhaps the rent can be lowered for the period of the lockdown and increased afterwards to catch up on the payments um, or something along those lines. There might be a moratorium on rent until such time as the lockdown ends um, and then maybe it can be increase slightly um, to uh, uh, for the months after the lockdown just to make up for the amounts that haven't been paid during the lockdown. Whatever the case is, it's open to the parties to reach agreement. Um, obviously, any agreement that gets reached should be put in writing just to protect both parties from any sort of um, attempts to um, claim that the agreement was anything other than the terms that were actually agreed. Um, and then there's obviously considerations for both parties. Landlords need to bear in mind that they need to be reasonable. Um, and what, what I mean is that they need to obviously bear in mind that tenants are going to be um, struggling to make their rent uh, during this time. If people are not earning any money or if they're earning half pay or whatever the case is, the landlords must be reasonable. That being said, tenants must also bear in mind that landlords have financial obligations of their own to meet. So tenants try, or tenants often think, you know, my landlord owns this property, they're rich. Oftentimes the landlord owns the property, yes, but they have a bond over it that they need to pay or they have a bond over another house that they need to pay um, and they need to pay their own um, water and lights and all, all of that. So, you know, where the main source of um, income for a, a landlord might be the rentals that they charge, they also have big expenses to meet as well. So we're all in a very similar boat, whether we are landlord and tenant. So everybody needs to display some level of understanding for everybody else. Okay, so that's um, that's basically it for the presentation itself. If anyone has any questions, please um, send them through so that we can go through some of them as many as we can in the time that we have. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. So, so for um, yeah, like you said, guys, if you have any questions, please send it through. There was a request, however, that you put your contact details on again um, for them okay. to take down. Uh, Clinton, just a few. Sorry, Steve, jumping in again as usual. Uh, just a no few problem. things that I have to deal with from a couple of our, our members that have asked questions. Yeah. All right. So, if the eviction order has been been given through the courts, okay, and yes. the last day being Thursday. So if, if they had to arrive there and they're going to evict you on the Thursday, surely, you know, as, as somebody who's going to be evicted, you've got to have somewhere to go to. So, I mean, you know, how does that work? Okay, so with... Um, the lockdown, with, you can't yep. go and look for somewhere else to be because you're yes. breaking the laws. So how does that apply? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so obviously um, there are, when, when they refer to the regulations, I'm just going to go back quickly to the... Um, slide with the regulation so everyone can see it while I'm referring to it. Um, I think it's the next one. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay. So you'll see here it says um, that people need to be evicted in terms of the extension of security of tenure act and the prevention of illegal eviction and unlawful occupation of land act. So that prevention of illegal eviction and unlawful occupation of land act is called the PI act. Okay. And all evictions must happen in accordance with that act. That, um, that act uh, lists all the factors that need to be taken into consideration before a person is removed from um, any residential premises um, and that includes the person's right to housing it includes consideration of elderly people and children it includes the consideration of the person the person's ability to find alternative accommodation which obviously during the lockdown will be a big one 
um, because if it's impossible to find alternative accommodation because the law doesn't allow you to do so, then obviously the court needs to take that into consideration. Um, what people must also realize is that evictions are not um, immediate things. They don't happen straight away. Um, the person, the landlord would have to um, go to an attorney, get the application drafted, which could take a fair amount of time. Uh, once they've drafted the application, they have to go to court and get it issued, and then they have to serve it on the person. Uh, so this process takes a lot of time, and once it's been served, then the tenant will have time to answer the allegations um, and also make these arguments that, you know, number one, I have nowhere else to go, and it's impossible for me to find alternative accommodation. Number two, I live with quite a few elderly dependent people, and I'm, I just, I'm not earning any money, and the problem is that... Um, obviously, during this lockdown, there's no way for me to change the situation. Um, and obviously, this is going to be a difficult one for the courts to deal with because on the one hand, landlords need money. On the other hand, people need to live in homes and not on the streets. Um, so there's going to be a weighing up of, of um, interests against one another. But as I said, they need to follow what's contained in the PI Act. Um, if people do want a copy of it, they can let me know and I can um, send it through on email to them so that they can read through it. It's, um, but what you have to do to get an eviction is fairly extensive and very, very time consuming. So um, we have to have faith that the courts will take everything into consideration, especially the circumstances leading to um, people not being able to pay rent. Yeah, because I think the other thing that comes into that, you know, the individual that's renting the house has got a deposit tied up there, which, you know, again, looking at a couple of articles and what was on carte blanche, use it for this month or whatever. But, you know, they would obviously need that back, and it's a catch-22. I mean, if you don't have the money and you're not working, how do you enter into another contract, and then how do you put a deposit down? But the other one that came up in terms of my notes, Clinton, was that where there's a managing agent involved, uh, you know, where the the... the, the Lessor is basically, um, you know, communicating with them. It seems like there's yeah. a bit of a break there because it's not going back up to the, you know, the owner per se. They say, well, the contract's with us and we'll do the negotiation. So how do people mm -hmm. that are renting get around that one? Um, well, I mean, if the if the managing agent is mandated to negotiate, then obviously you can negotiate through the managing agent. Um, if the landlord or the, the owner or whoever insists that you deal with the managing agent then you have to do so um but that being said like i said this whole the whole um lockdown situation is one what that requires reasonableness it can't have people you know just saying okay well you haven't paid for a month get out you know um if if it requires that negotiations happen with the managing agent and that's what it must do um, if the person wants to rather negotiate directly with the owner they can ask but if it's declined then um, they do need to negotiate with the managing agent i know that sometimes bigger entities seem um, faceless and uncaring so it, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult but um, yeah if, if they're dealing with the managing agent then that's what they must do and then Clinton, if they make the request of, um, you know, has the owner of the property got a bond relief, you know, from the banks in terms of that, is that a, a question that should be asked or answered? Um, the one case that I've had is that they basically come back and said that's not, you know, privy in, uh, information to, you know, uh, those that are renting. Mm -hmm. So is that a reasonable question to ask? Um, in terms of being reasonable to ask, obviously it does help. Um, the tenant to know that their landlord is receiving a payment holiday or a moratorium on payments, but it isn't something that the landlord has to reveal if they don't want to. That's their personal information, um, and it's up to them uh, whether they are going to get any kind of assistance with that um, side of the bond. You know, if they want to get assistance, they can. They don't have to tell the tenant about it. Um, the tenant can certainly ask if they want to, but if the if the landlord says I'm not going to divulge that information, there's nothing you can do to force them to. And if you paid some of the rent but not all of it, how is that deemed? I mean, I get the fact that there's an agreement in place. So let's say your rent is ten thousand and you've managed to pay seven, and you're now yeah. struggling, but you'll be able to make it. So how is that viewed in terms of? Regulation. I get it. You've got a rental agreement. You are going to use the house when it costs you ten thousand. But in that interim, you paid seven. You know, yeah. how yeah. does that impact? Okay. Well, obviously, showing an intention that you want to pay but are unable to pay the full amount is something that will go towards you know making it less likely. First of all, for the for the landlord to try and get an eviction, because at the end of the day, you must also remember 
if they get their order and they manage to get you out, they can't put someone in there after you. You're out, they can't put someone in, so they're not going to get paid anyway. Whereas if they have you in the property, okay, and they allow you to live there and they say, okay, we can slow down on payments and you can catch up later, they will eventually get their money for the time of the lockdown. Whereas if they get you out now, obviously they're not going to have another tenant, so they will get nothing anyway. So as I said, reasonableness prevails. Um, if you pay your 70%, it will go, or whatever the case is, 50%, 40%, whatever can be afforded. It will go a long way, number one, to show the landlord that you intend paying, but that you maybe just can't afford the entire amount just yet, and maybe you can catch up later. And also when it gets to court, you can show, listen, I've done whatever I can to try and pay the rent, and I'll do it again once I get back to work and I've got a steady income, or that I go back to 100% income, because at the moment I'm at 80%. Whatever the case is, it will assist your case, obviously. Um, but negotiations must happen before um, it gets to this. So it shouldn't be a case of just paying 70% and hoping it, it goes away. Yeah. The tenant must engage with the landlord and say, listen, this is my situation, okay? I'm normally very good with my rent. I pay it on time. I can normally pay it. But at the moment, because of the lockdown, I'm not earning money. Can we just agree? Um, I think I can afford for the next three months if I can pay 40% of the rent. And then once it picks up again, we can talk about um, how to pay back the 60% of each of those three months. Maybe I can add on 10% to my rent for, the, for a certain amount of time uh, to catch up what you gave me during the lockdown you know if you if you gave me a little bit of assistance during the lockdown i can catch it up later um but again the argument must uh, if if a la landlord is being difficult i mean they should be made aware that as i said if if this tenant gets removed they will have nothing for the duration of the lockdown if it's three months four months five months six months they could have no money coming in and even if the tenant is there and only paying 10%, at least they're getting 10% for those six months and they have a commitment from the tenant to pay the rest that they owe afterwards, then at least they'll get something out of it. Then the other one, Clinton, where I've seen one in particular where they, you know, they threaten, you know, that they'll attach property and everything else. So obviously are those two of the same, eviction and attachment, or are they going to apply for both? Okay, so they can... They can um, attach property for the amount of rent that is owed, okay? Um, obviously, the regulations don't deal with the attachment of property um, during during lockdown and, um, and the implications of that. So um, the landlord has what they call a tacit hypothec over everything on the property. What that means is that they get a claim to, let's, let's just, for example, say the, the tenant's TV and their furniture. Um, if the tenant doesn't pay for three months, they can then um, ask the court to um, declare that property attachable. But you'd have to approach court and ask for that. And it's very unlikely that they'll do it. And based on the spirit of the regulations, I don't know that that would, um, with that, that kind of order would go through. Um, the attachment of property generally happens after somebody gets judgment for the rent that's due. And that's something that takes quite a while. So. <clears throat> If somebody, if the landlord wants the rent, for instance, for three months, it's a different situation to getting you evicted. So they're entitled to rent for the amount of time that you've been on the property and not paid, obviously. Okay, so if you've not paid for three months, they can claim the three months from you and they can have you evicted. Okay, um, but their most pressing issue would obviously be the eviction and they're not, not likely going to waste the money to try and claim those three months if they know that you can't afford to pay the rent, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, because that's the other one that, that I've had where, you know, the negotiations start and it always boils down to, well, how much can you pay? You know, and and yes. when can you? And the problem with that is, is that, uh, you know, some of the individuals that have phoned me, and you know, I've been talking to you are saying, well, you know, I've had no income for this month and the month before, so how do I project what's going to happen you know, in yeah. June or July, you know, and that's the difficult yeah. one in trying to sit down with that negotiation with a document saying you will pay 10,000 Rand as of, you know, June or July when nobody actually knows where they are going to be, you know, in June. Yes, no, sure. So, so obviously these negotiations need to be flexible and it's not about, um, it's not about reducing to writing a, um, an amount that has to be paid every month that you're going to end up having to negotiate again. The situation should be, um, at this point in time, I think I can afford this much for the next three months, okay? And after those three months, if the lockdown is still in place, then we need to negotiate again. 
And once my income resumes, we'll need to negotiate the picking up of the rent um, so that it slowly gets back to normality and then I can pay back what I owe you um, once my income gets back to its normal level, um, if you know what I mean. So it's not a case of um, it's 4,000 from now until the end of the lockdown. It's what can I afford now? For how long can I afford it? When do we need to negotiate this again? Perfect. Well done. Sorry, uh, is there any other questions? I'm keeping you tied up there, Clinton, and no, no my I've got from that communication. Any other questions? Uh, yes, we do have uh, two questions here so far. First one, does it mean a tenant does not need to pay rent for April and May for commercial properties? Okay, so the commercial property is obviously um, governed by its contract. You need to look through your contract, okay? Um, but if you uh, are renting commercial property that you cannot use because of the lockdown, so if you are performing a service that is not essential or not permitted under the lockdown regulations um, and you can't use the premises, then there will be, um, if there's no force majeure clause, then um, the the prescripts of reasonableness will come into play. If it's impossible for you to make use of the property, there's no reason for you to have to pay for that property. Okay, and then um, I think it's on the same question. The owner need to pay rates and taxes and the tenant's equipment is still on the premises. Yeah, okay. Um, it's fair It's fair comment if the tenant's equipment is still on the premises. You know, um, perhaps it's, it's again a matter for negotiation because obviously now the party's going to want to go to court and waste the money going to court now. Um, you know, the parties are still allowed to negotiate here. If the if the landlord feels that the equipment's still on the premises, so they're getting some use out of the property, then they need to come to some kind of um, meeting in the middle where they say, okay, you can't necessarily run your operations now, but I do still need to pay rates and taxes. So can we agree on amount that we um, will say that you're getting from the property in terms of storing your equipment here? Because um, you are still getting that use out of the property and uh, maybe they come to an agreement, okay, it's 20% of the value um, of the normal rent. If your rent's 10,000, pay me 2,000 a month um, and and we can call it fair for the period of the lockdown. Uh, no, it doesn't seem like there are any more questions. Thank you very much for the session, Clint. Perfect. All right, thanks a lot. And then thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for today's session. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope we can all take something out of this to apply in our lives or in our daily business.